Hi, I'm downtown Josh Brown. We are live from the compound. I'm here with Michael Batnick and our friend Nina O'Neill from the firm Archer Investment Management in Raleigh, North Carolina. Welcome, Nina. Thank you. I'm so right. excited. So here's what's going to happen. We're going to take a quick break, play the music, and then we're going to get right into our discussion, okay? I asked you to come up because I just feel like, and I said this to you off camera, Every time I have a conversation with you about being a financial advisor, running a practice, trying to manage our lives, I find that you're one of the most authentic people I know, and you just tell it like it is, and you did that on stage at Wealthstack, and people absolutely loved it. Um, how long have has Archer Investment Management been around, and what is your role there? So we've been around for 12 years, uh, actually 13. So 2006, my partner founded it, and then okay. I partnered with him in 2009. Okay. And so we That's celebrate 10 years, 10 years yeah. which is exciting. And my role is we are 50-50 partners on every client, every um, expense, every bit of revenue. So um, even though he founded it, I came on board uh, not too long afterwards and really helped to expand and grow the practice. Okay. So, so you're working with primarily high net worth investors um, in the North Carolina area? No, actually, Not we have clients in uh, either somewhere between 13 and 16 states across the country. Actually, our largest relationships are not in North Carolina at all. Um, and so we're from San Francisco, New York, Chicago. Um, a lot are going to be based in North Carolina just because of the nature of the beast. That's where we are. But we work with a range of individuals, so from high net worth down to not uh, a lot of net worth yet. So 55% of our book of business is high income earning professionals. And a lot of those are going to be still in their income earning years. So Gen X, Gen Y. And then 45% of our book is boomers, but they're young boomers. So our average client age is 52. I love the way you say boomers. Young say, boomers. Say, wait, say it one more time. Boomers. I'm boomers. <laughs> All right. Um, so here's the deal. You did this really cool video series for investment news called The Juggle is Real which I've just learned you have that term trademarked. I do. All right, I'm jealous. It's perfect. <laughs> but what you were basically tr what you were trying to get across is like this is not easy. And w what made me what made me so interested in that approach to like telling your story, yes, I'm an advisor, but then I go home, I have the kids, my husband, my house, all the, you know, you very rarely see that when advisors are public facing there's like this illusion of like how in control they are of everything and how easy everything is. And I think, you know, a lot of that is important for the marketing, but it's very rare that someone's like, look what's going on. So talk a little bit about like what made you want to do that and uh, when you film that and um, what the response has been. Well, the response has been huge from men and women. And we were intentionally making sure we talked about working parents because it's not just the moms, so you guys are the dads, and I've heard a huge amount of feedback saying like, thank you for including or recognizing that it's both parties. And um, so the, the, the concept came around a long time ago and I started using it as a hashtag because I got really irritated with the Pinterest mom look, honestly. Right. And, and not just in our industry, but across the board, this high expectation of parents to be, you know, working on all levels at an incredible, a cr incredibly high energy and perfection. And I just didn't think it was fair because I always felt like I was failing at that. And um, so I thought, why don't, I mean, I know I'm not the only person dealing with this. And when you talk about advisors, you know, go to industry events or talk to people locally. And it's like trying to prove how smart you are. You know, er everybody's got their opinions on things. And a lot of times it's just a little bit of a one up and, you know, my AUM's bigger and I just, you know, it kind of got a little frustrating and, and frankly boring because yeah. I'm like, let's just talk about real life. This, you know, the reality is it's hard to grow your business. It's hard to be this perfect parent. And I just kind of wanted to shatter that expectation because I think it's caused a lot of depression and anxiety and a culture that's really not fair. Um, as women have entered the workforce, we have this um, mental load that I've talked about recently. I finally found the word for it for what I've kind of looked for for years where and, and all working parents do, but I think women carry it a little heavier as the lead parent usually. And um, just kind of starting to put names to things and 
a little bit of relief. And so I've had this overwhelming response, emails, social media messages, people coming up to me that I don't even know, like at Wellstack and different events and saying, you know, thank you. It was such a relief to hear that it's real and that it's authentic. When you started to do these videos, were they for yourself, for your clients, for prospects, for advisors? Like who was the intended audience or was it just for yourself, like to just vent? So uh, Matt Ackerman at Investment News is a friend of mine and he has always told me, he's like, I love your posts because I'd feel the same way and I'm traveling a lot and he has two two boys as well. So we were just kind of shooting the breeze, talking about it. And right. he's like, it would be such a cool video series. Because I was actually going to make it blog posts or a book. So I actually have the stories you, in so, book but form. But you had cameras in your house. Yeah. Okay. Yes. And, it's like a reality show. Yeah, yeah. Right. And, and it was funny because they filmed me going to school the first day of school for my sons. And... Um, so I had a lot of text messages from moms like, have you started what's, a reality show? Yeah, what's going on? I was on? like, well, just I feel wait. Like <laughs> y- you found the right medium because that like would not resonate in writing. It, it just wouldn't have the same message in a I blog I don't post. think so. And that's kind of where when he said video, it was the first time I'd ever thought about it because I'm not going to produce that myself. I don't have the... I don't, I don't know how to, but... Yeah, we're financial advisors. We're not... Right, yeah. And so I'd never thought about it. And then it was kind of like, well, what's the purpose? I mean... There's nothing investment related in it, it, but it the relatability I think was well, it was overrode gonna, that. That's what I was going to say to you because if if people that are not financial advisors but they're just like potential investors in your firm, you know they they would they're the type of people that you would um, normally bring on as clients, but they do something else. They work in you know a bank or a software company or an oil company, whatever. If they come across to you in that setting, like living your real life carrying one kid, feeding the other one. People yeah. seeing you in that setting, it just, for me, it feels so much more relatable. Like, this isn't somebody on Instagram who's claiming to be an influencer and cultivating this, like, platinum version of themselves. This is somebody that's like, look, it is what it is. I'm doing my best. I'm doing a pretty good job considering everything I'm dealing with. Somebody seeing that, I feel like if if they're smart and they get it, they would be like, that's somebody that I trust with my life decisions, my money. Um, and I, I'm guessing you got that response. Yeah, and it, a lot of our clients are living that life. So they are, most of the time, two they're income working. earning households yeah. and they have um, difficult jobs. And so I love the response from a client that I don't get to speak to a lot because she's a doctor and her hours are insane and her husband's a traveling uh, sales professional. And so, and they have two girls that are um, young probably, you know, 10, 12 years old. So, I mean, they're juggling all, it's the same story. They get it. How, and so how she would they, always respond to me after we put those videos out. And she's like, I love these. This is my <laughs> life too, you know? And so. How old, how old are your kids? So they're five and eight, two boys. Okay. I have 13 and 10. What, what are you, what are your, I'm like 0.3 and three <laughs> almost. That's yeah, the real juggle. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. When, uh, so I loved your, I've told you, I loved your post yesterday. It was so real oh, and so you. relatable. And I it's just, I've looked at the last 10 years lately, just hitting a, a milestone for me. And um, I know you've put out like your last kind of few years and, and moving out of the broker, you know, the yeah. reformed broker. And so there's a lot of sentiment to that and, and kind of seeing how far things go. But man, you're really in the, the throes of the, yeah. the, the juggle. Because I would, I would tell you it gets easier. Um, but it, it doesn't. It, it doesn't. It's just different. And, and well, so we, like I get this all the time. How do you find time to do all these things? Yeah. And you adjust around your kid's schedule. Yeah. So I went to the movies on Saturday night. I went, I saw a ten o'clock movie. That's yeah. how I did it. Like yeah. Put the kids, put the to, kids bed to bed and then yeah. go out. Yeah. Right. And it changes. I mean, now I love doing stuff with my kids. I'm not as much dying to go. You know just my husband and I eat alone. I mean, that stuff's great, but we love the four of us to go out together. And like my kids love sushi. I love sushi, you know, experiencing new, we just went to a Korean barbecue restaurant together. Like that's fun to me. Whereas when they were, you know, zero and three, (laughs) that was my version of hell. (laughs) So you're kind of a reform broker also. Yeah. You and I don't have that dissimilar of a background. Right. Um, Prior to becoming an advisor, like, how did you get into the business? What was your start? So I call myself the accidental advisor. I was working so in- So do I. Yeah, I was in fashion PR in New York, actually, and hated it. And um, have had a lot of cool experiences, but just really didn't find that a long-term uh, picture for me. And so worked with a recruiter and took a job uh, right nearby um, at Jenison Associates, which is an institutional money manager. Right. And so I was kind of the liaison between the clients and the firm and really learned- 
that this can be a relationship business, which I don't think on the institutional side you find all the time. And I really learned how to work with people and the relatability. Um, I became very close to a lot of the clients and I watched the wedding video of one of the client's daughters on the phone with him and he, he was the CFO of a huge company. And I just found that they taught me a lot about not only working in finance, but that it was about managing the personal relationship. And I love that. And so when I wanted to move back to North Carolina, I was an advisor at a wirehouse. So I took an right. opportunity there. And then in the financial crisis, they ter completely terminated my um, training program that I'd been they in did, for just they did, They years. did the, the biggest favor imaginable. Oh, uh, yeah. At the time, you know, you think it's the worst thing. And I wanted to get out of the business. But I met my partner, who, whom I'd known for three years already. We right. met in 06, right when I moved back to North Carolina. He's from New York, so it was kind of this interesting. And he's only three or four years older than I am, so we were both really young. Um, I was 28, and he was in his early 30s. He had just started the his own firm, kind of gone off from a group. So um, he was like, I just can't watch another young person get out of the business. Right. And I was like, but I don't – I just – I would interviewed and felt like I was just going from one sinking ship to another and kind of had a bad taste in my mouth for the business. Right. And had a lot of great experiences starting out, but had a lot of just – Felt like I couldn't do what I wanted to do, which was just well. That's what I was going to say. Like your life would have been totally different had that training program survived the financial crisis, mm -hmm. and you stuck it out. First of all, you wouldn't be doing videos and With you blog right posts now, yeah, and, and speaking on stages. Michael. You wouldn't really have that much control over where you get your clients from. Like your life would have turned out very differently. So, like it's it's a similar thing. Like I changed from being a broker to an advisor during the crisis, also. So like I can very much relate and I shudder to think like what would happen if I were still a series seven registered rep somewhere like, you know, my life yeah. would be very different too. And, so. and I, and I look back and I'm so grateful and, but you know, kind of the point of what, where you were saying, like I, I share that it's hard. It was so hard and I got married. I've had two children, three pregnancies, renovated a house three times, moved and built an advisory firm, um, started another business this year. I've done a lot of. I've done, I did the video series with Investment News, tried to be a good mom. My oldest son played 70 baseball games this year, and I was at all of them that I could. That's right, you're, insane, you're a baseball mom. Insane okay. baseball mom, yeah. But it's not easy, and that's the message that, because I have people all the time say exactly what you said, how do you do all these things? I joke I don't sleep a lot, I'm a night owl. But it's, you figure it out, and you find what's most important to you, and you follow the passions. That's, like, that's what, you find time for mm -hmm. what matters. Yeah, yeah, you make your own priorities. Yeah. The last thing I want to ask you, you last year um, or earlier this year started an organization for women who work in, I think it's mainly financial advisory. Just financial advisors. Okay. And basically it's not like this incredibly complex thing. It's like conversations and a community with people that are on the same path and want to help each other. Can you speak a little bit about what that what that's all about? Yeah, it's the Female Advisor Network, and it really just came out of me and the experiences we were talking about, not feeling like I had a network of women throughout my career. I do now, um, but I kept meeting with women that we had the same or similar shared experiences separately, and I just felt like we could probably do better as a community and figure out a way to work together. So I started with a retreat, which um, I had someone from, uh, you know, a friend from your organization yeah, attend. Blair. And shout to, shout to no, not oh, Blair, Dina. Uh, Dina. Dina. That's Dina. Right, yeah, Dina Blair came. couldn't come this yeah, yeah. year. And so uh, just loved being with those women, but in planning that, I thought, you know, this this is amazing and I still want to do it, but I think we could go bigger and then started to kind of formulate with some, um, and, and I called you when I wanted to launch it and some friends and saying, you know, what do you think? And, you know, how can we get the word out? And so it's been amazing and the feedback's been huge. The, there are a lot of programs to help women network as a community together. And so wherever you are in your career and, um, I think we have between 30 and 40% have over 15 years in the business uh, within the community. So it's not just for new advisors. Um, and I think those women are getting as much out of it as, as new ones. It's really wherever you are and whether you want to connect in person or digitally, there's a way for you to That's great. You should it. have, I, you should have, you should have hundreds of members, like, like people, people that are looking for their community, whether they find it in person or online, like there are just so many things that are unaddressed. And I hope that, this thing really takes off for you. Do you do you remember the first time you and I spoke? Yes, it was about around the same thing. You you posted a blog post yeah, uh, yeah. looking for women, and and I loved that you owned you 
had kind of created an organization that you yeah. you were proud of the people here, but they didn't really reflect exactly what you wanted to and lacked some. So diversity. you so I right I did this thing like I'm I'm struggling to um, find and hire more women in my organization, and I feel like a, like I'm failing in a in an important area, and like a bunch of people reached out, and it was almost all encouraging. Um, but you were like, dude, you're a mess. Let's get on the phone. I was like, no, we exist. We're not unicorns, but like, I can help you. Let's talk. But you did help. You did help yeah. me. You were awesome. Oh, so thank I, you. I will never, I will never forget that. I really appreciate it. Um, how do you want people to follow you and, and find your stuff? So you're at, N o are you N O'Neill? N O'Neill five ten at N O'Neill five ten on Twitter. Yeah, so I'm on LinkedIn as well, and then I'd love for anyone, guys or or girls, to follow uh, the Female Advisor Network, which is at the Female Advisor on Twitter, and there's also Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, so you can just search for the handles. Awesome. Thanks for coming by, Thank Nina. You. Appreciate awesome. it. All right, let us know uh, what you think. Is is balancing running uh, any business, financial advisory or otherwise? Uh, and family, is it is it hard? Is it easy for you? What makes it hard? What makes it easy? We love your feedback. Go ahead and subscribe to the channel if you have not already. Follow Nina on all of her channels, and we will be back with you soon. Bye.